Hi guys, today's video is the first episode of my summary series of Unexpected Joy at Dom by Alex Age Aguirre. It's one of the work recommended literature tests and I've used pictures to make some illustrations here and those pictures that I used in making the illustrations are not true representation of the characters in the novel. They are just for illustrations. Now let's get started. The first part of the novel starts with the author describing the terrible health condition of 22 years old Massa, who now looks very lean and light like a grandmother, and how Massa's ailing health condition bothers his friend, Ni. Ni and Massa had been intimate friends before she took ill two years ago. The doctor had all said um, that she has a few days to live. He remembers his friend who advised him to visit a spiritualist at Gomo Dako. Then the neighbor knocks at the door to inquire of Massa's health condition to know how she is doing. Ni assures them that Massa is alright as he attends to them at the door making sure that they don't get a full view of the room. Ni tells Massa of his friend's suggestion to visit a faith healer which she agrees to. He takes the chamber pot out to empty in an open drain behind the building when a lot of thoughts run through his mind. First is the amount he owes the bank where he works. Then he heard a gunshot, which frightened him back to his um, room. He sits on a chair with his head on a table. Then he slept. Chapter 2 It's 8 a.m. in Ilero, Nigeria. Mama Rojo and Ibuk, we are going to visit a man called Tom Monday to have a discussion from the Bible. On their way, they had to jump so many hurdles. They had to jump some bad spots, which Mama Orojo found difficult due to her weight. On their way to Tom Monday, Mama Orojo asked Ibuk why she had to buy the cross and laugh instead of kissing it like every other person on the day of their initiation into Amen Christie. Mama Ibuk said she felt like um biting the cross and laughing on the day of their initiation into the Amen Christi, which made every other person to join her in laughing. Ibuk discloses her agreement with her husband not to preach to each other about religion, as her husband has said he will not join any church that is younger than him, and how her husband raged with anger the day she broke the agreement, telling, um, telling him to join the church. As they keep pushing through the bad road, Ibuk asks Mama Rojo what she said the immigration officer they had seen earlier reminds her of. Mama Rojo said he reminds her of how she came to stay in Nigeria. Mama Rojo was born in Ghana. Her parents and grandparents had lived in Ghana until the government began to deport all the um, aliens, alleging that they are the ones causing the problems they are having in the country. Mama Orojo's parents died on their way to Nigeria. Her younger brother, who was too young to face the uncertainty that awaits them in the civil war ravaged Nigeria, was left in the care of a family friend and grandma who refused to join them. She says her early years in Nigeria were miserable. They arrive to Monday's house, who talks to them about his religious intolerant daughter, which he says was caused by her husband. Mama Orojo, who has studied the Bible in and out, brings out her Bible to initiate a discussion, which is what brought them to Tom Monday's house. Chapter 3 What has been declared against forwardness in Lagos? Every alien had to live in five days. And the person in charge of the operation is called Inspector Polio. Every corner of the city has been painted and white with an inscription, War Against Waywardness. Mr. Polio is happy about the policy and the new Nigeria envisions without aliens. At this point, the author takes us back to Massa and Ni in Ghana. Massa is in good mood today as she teases me and have a playful discussion with him concerning their first meeting at a cocktail party to the plate of porridge they were going to have that Monday morning, including the condo Linda had given them. Linda is Nee's colleague. Chapter 4 
Accra, Ghana, Tuesday, 10 a.m. After the revolution and many aliens, including those in civil service and commerce, left the country, the young ones without experience took over power and as a result, the economy began to fall. The price of cocoa fell in the international market. The country also experienced drought. In the bank where Ni works, he discusses with the manager about some projects presented by individuals seeking loans to develop them. But his manager dismisses them, claiming the first one, called Antio, is not profit-oriented. And the second one won't fly because of the bank policy. As I discussed, the lady typist Linda walks in and teases me of not talking to her since today. Linda brings the dailies, which talks about the issue of aliens in African countries, how aliens are being sent out of African countries. In Nigeria, even those with valid passports are sent out of the country. The bank manager said he would sack every alien from the bank if he had his way. Linda gives planted and granite to Nee, which she puts in his drawer. Nee worried that another policy of sacking all foreigners like was done 15 years ago may be repeated. Despite being born in Ghana and having a Ghanaian name, his skin color, travel mark, still betrays his origin. Nee goes through the dailies and so that 3 million people had been deported from Nigeria, 2 million of which were Ghanaians. Linda advised Ni nee to his house, which Ni nee hastily agreed to. After work, Ni nee walks to a school where he does extra work of part-time teaching of GC candidates. He arrives at the school late and the headmaster wasn't pleased with him. He requested for a change of timetable to suit his late evening, which was granted. After that, he walks to um, the market to collect the weekly susu. Susu is a kind of thrift by the businessmen and women that are in the market. But he met the market scanty. A woman selling tapioca explained to him that it is as a result of the drought which bedeviled the country and scarcity of petrol. He greeted a sick looking man who reiterated the decision of the government to frustrate its citizens by removing 50 cities from circulation. And according to the man, his 50,000 cities in 50 um, cities denomination, which is stocked in his fridge, has been stolen. Another woman, Ni, inquired of is reported to have died because of the loss of 40,000 cities, which were in the banned 50 cities denominations. Chapter 6 Mama Orojo was stroking through the Bible when Tom Monday asked about telecom interlace contract that Mama Orojo executed, which she assured him that she constructed half of their junior staff quarters. He suggests getting her another contract from Interlace if she would not mind the condition of financing the contract before being paid. Mamo Rojo accepted. Tom Monday was baffled that Mamo Rojo could finance any project before being paid, and the thought of marrying her ran through his mind until Ebook brought his mind back to what they were discussing by tapping the table. They began discussing issues which uh, Monday Tom did not agree with in most of them. At the end of the discussion, he promised to get the contract for Mamo Rojo from Interlast Company. Chapter 7 As Ni trusts him, he passes through a space that served as a big and African United Market called Kentomato Market. Different tribes in Africa did business in the market until part of it was gutted down by fire and the many part was pulled down later during the army regime because according to them it is an anathema and a shame to the society. Ni stood by an old wall which reminds him of the dilapidation caused by different revolutions. He moves to a spot near the physically defaced lagoon to defecate. Notices some people were smoking marijuana behind him. He then moved to another spot where he saw a corpse. He quickly attended to the business that brought him there and walked home. Chapter 8 In the evening, Ni notices that some men, two men, were smoking in front of his room, 
which brought smoke into his room. But he couldn't tell them to leave because they had warned him not to talk to them whenever he sees them smoking there. Else they will beat him up. They later left on their own. Master was in pain and after Ni had taken care of her, he slept. In his sleep, he talks about his blackness not being enough and the three stripes on his face. This worried Massa, who reassured him that that won't be an issue since there are still some um, tribes in Ghana that also have stripes on their faces. Massa was really worried about the big xenophobia in Ghana. Chapter 9 8 p.m. in Lagos. In Lagos, one Rojo, who has a lot of contrast due to the oil boom in Nigeria, is planning to travel to Ghana. She shops for the things she will be needing from a store that is close to her house. The store owner, Idem, and her husband, Wachuk, who always quarreled over Wachuk's inability to provide for the family, despite leaving very early to work and returning late at night. They noticed Mama's intention to travel due to the things she bought from them. Idem, after selling to Ghanaian construction workers, also talked about how she had lost a lot of customers due to the indigenization policy in Nigeria. Mama lay in bed, Mama Rojo lay in bed, trying to recollect the place she lived in Ghana. Her mind also went to a soldier who duped her soon after the civil war in Nigeria and how he got shot for other offenses. She also remembered her second-hand clothing business that received a lot of patronage from eastern parts of Nigeria. Mama gets visitors from the church. And after having a meeting in her house about a second mission in mile zero to which she was asked to do an estimate of the expenditure, afterwards they left and Mama could not even see them off as she had fallen asleep. The next day, Mama visits her construction site. The name of her company, Madame Sansi Group of Companies, is written clearly on the truck in the construction site. She meets the foreman who told her about some lazy and pilfering workers. She asked him to sack them. She works with some idle workers who informed him that their work is being stored due to the irregularity of power supply. She promises to buy a standby um, generator when she comes back from her trip to Ghana. When power was restored, the workers started working again and one of them got injured and was taken away for medical attention. Chapter 10. Ni sees a man heading to the sixth floor of the complex where the bank where Ni works is. The man collides with Linda and hurries to the stairs after apologizing to Linda. Linda followed suit. Ni invited Linda to join him in his meal. She reminds him of the invitation to her house. Now we are taken back to Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, 10.30 a.m., Mama met an excellent traffic on her way to the airport. When she finally got to the airport just in time, a dubious man was offering to help her in the boarding process, but she refused by constantly speaking to the air hostess, who encouraged her to ignore the man. When it was time for Mama's bag to be checked, it was checked thoroughly, and the officer that did the checking pitied her for not traveling to um, Ghana with enough money to sustain her without knowing that mama already stocked a lot of money in the bible in Nin's office the bank driver was being reprimanded by the manager for driving a car worth 200,000 cities without a guard Nin checked his account balance which had little money in it he's owing the bank 1,000 cities and hopes to receive his leave allowance and remuneration from the school he does private teaching to help him push through his leave. He called on a waiting customer who applied for a loan which need dismisses on the basis of not having proper documentation. He interviewed four other clients and none of them received a positive answer. Those customers whose applications were rejected were very angry, but Nick couldn't help them and he moved to the manager's office. Linda reminds him of his invitation to her house. And he made it clear to her that he does not have enough money to afford leisure. This is where we'll be ending today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Click on the like button. I'll be uploading the next episode very soon. Click on the like button if you 
enjoyed the video and do not forget to share it to your friends. I'll be uploading the next episode really soon. Thank you very much for watching and see you very soon in the next episode.